today I've already recorded several videos and um, this might be my last one for today it might not be uh, so this is for my review of the Sakura Koi watercolor brush pens uh, I thought I would record me swatching them for you guys um, so you can kind of get a feel for how the pigments move I'm going to be swatching today with this Pentel water brush Ooh, which actually needs a refill <laughs> But I think it'll get through the test. Um, I've already swatched more than half of these. Some more colors came in today. Uh, these are my initial swatches. As you can maybe see, let's see if I can do this. Boop. As you can maybe see, there are no, uh, there's, there's one brown, but other than that one brown, there aren't any, really any skin tones that come with the 12 piece set or the ones I have ordered I purchased open stock years ago so um, I ordered some more from Ko uh, Sakura and um, the thing <laughs> the thing is I you can't find it's hard to find these markers open stock but you can order them off of the Sakura Koi website uh, and Sakura is the company that makes microns and uh, pigmas and um, the Koi watercolor sets that come in tubes and in pans. This is part of that line. Um, and I wanted to order some skin tones and some colors that didn't seem to be, uh, that weren't in the set I had. You can buy these markers in sets of like 12 and 24 and 48. And if you like what you see, if you like what my review told you, um, your taste might be different than mine. We might be looking for different things, or maybe we're looking for the same things. I don't know yet. Um, I highly recommend you just go ahead and order the big set. Now, um, right now, Tombow ABT and Zig clean color brushes are super popular. Um, so they're, they're getting a little hard to find. You might find that these markers, watercolor markers, which are cheaper, are more in line with what you're looking for. Um, and if that's the case, that's great, for real. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I am always for, if there's a product that works just as well for what you want it to do, and it's easier to get a hold of, and it's cheaper, use that you don't have to use what everybody else is using it doesn't make you a bad artist or a bad crafter or a bad stamper or a bad scrapbooker or calligrapher um it just it just means you found something else that works for you now these brushes do not have the individual brushes bristles i'm sorry that the zig clean color have um they're more like the Zig Art and Graphic Twin and the Tombow ABT where it's a solid mass of, of I don't want to say it's rubber because I'm sure it's not rubber. It might be rubber foam. So when I do swatches for watercolor markers, I swatch on watercolor paper and this is Stra uh, Strathmore Watercolor Journal. And usually I would write the product's name above it, but this is a continuation of the prior page so I don't that's not really necessary that's not necessary I I understand that it they belong together and then I also write the products name either above or below like the color and this is important because um, a lot of these products I mean, these are, actually, these are actually pretty good for having a cap that matches the interior color. But a lot of markers don't really. <laughs> it's not like Copic, where the, the lid is pretty much the color you're getting, for the most part. These are very different. And when you're swatching, you want to clean the, the dye off of the brush. And you can do that with a paper towel or you can be um, tacky and wipe it on your pant leg like I do sometimes when no one's watching because uh, I'm an artist and I can't. I, t I shouldn't. No. <laughs> I'm an artist and if I'm at home, I'm probably not wearing fancy clothes. So it doesn't really matter. I usually just wear jeans and the denim is so dark that 
if it doesn't come out after washing, you probably can't see it anyway. And I'm really sorry about blocking the light. I actually have another, another light source, but it's not as bright as it used to be. It's an LED hot light. Oh, it's probably time to change the battery. I should say that if you're one of, oh, I'll pull out, uh, if you're one of my viewers who has found me through YouTube and you don't yet read my blog, you should really read my blog because this YouTube channel is really just um, a supplement to the blog because um, it's a lot of work taking photos and writing captions. Um, it's a little bit easier to talk while I demonstrate. And it's a lot easier, honestly, to do tutorials and to show how things work and how I do things than to take a million photos and try to sum up what I'm doing because it's static. These are actually swatching pretty nice. Uh, one of the things I dislike with when I am testing watercolor markers is when the dye, and most of them are dye. The only ones that are pigment based that I know of are the Windsor and Newton watercolor markers. But I really don't like when the dye separates into the individual colors that were mixed to make that shade. And this happens a lot with browns and it's why I slammed and continue to slam the Akashi Asai watercolor brush pins because as soon as you add water to them, colors like purple are now blue and pink like separated not <laughs> not mixed together that would make them purple um and that just doesn't cut it for me but soccer I knows what they're doing with these and i've actually had good experiences with uh koi in the past because i use one of their little 12 pan paint half pan paint sets I use several of, over the years. I use those for my convention watercolors because I know how the colors react and they're easy to replace. And if I forget to bring it, I can buy another and I'm only $20 out rather than a, a lot of money out if I lost my working set. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but for what you're paying and for what it is, it's great. And I feel like these are very much the same way. Uh, Actually, I don't have any real complaints about them yet, but I mean, that usually comes up with the field test. So I feel like with this set that I ordered, I got, um, and I picked these colors specifically because I thought they, they would suit the sort of things I like to draw, the sort of art I like to make. Um, I like doing floral illustrations. I like drawing people. So I think I got several really good skin tones um, that hold together well even when water is added. So I'm happy about that. Um, I like the sap green. I like the salmon pink. The rose red, I wouldn't call that a rose red. That's like a fuchsia to me. But it's it holds together and it doesn't separate out into individual pigments. And, or I'm sorry, individual dyes. And that's really all I'm asking for at this point. <clears throat> and um, on my prior swatch test, I'd already kind of tested blendability. Um, I'd used the Koi Colorless Blender and I'd used the Tombow ABT Colorless Blender. And for as much as I've been talking mild smack, about Tombow ABTs. I will say I really like their colorless blender. Uh, it, it works with a variety of watercolor markers. Um, it's just the best watercolor colorless blender I have found. I don't know what they put in it. It's probably just water and glycerin because that's how these markers are made. It's 
eye and glycerin and water. Uh, but I'm happy with it. So that was my swatch test for the Sakura Koi watercolor brush pens. I hope you guys found it helpful. I will probably tape my, oh gee, tape, record. I'll probably record the, um, the field test as well, just because it might be easier than uh, taking a bunch of photos. So I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.